Here we show the Rotafor system fully hooked up and ready for a run. You'll notice that the cooling finger is connected to a recirculating water chiller. The temperature in the focusing chamber will be approximately 10 degrees higher than the temperature of the water that flows through the cooling finger. Make sure to set the temperature of the recirculating water chiller accordingly. Also, a high voltage power supply like the PowerPack 3000 will be required for the run. Once the sample is prepared, load it into a syringe and using a blunt needle such as the one that is supplied with the Rotafor starter kit to fill the focusing chamber through the loading ports. Start by filling every other port. Sample will spread freely through the membrane core into the adjoining compartments. For the standard focusing chamber, the minimum sample volume must be sufficient to cover the cooling finger. Generally, 35 milliliters is sufficient. The standard focusing chamber also holds a maximum of about 58 to 60 milliliters of sample. For the mini focusing chamber, always load the maximum sample volume of 18 milliliters. Continue to fill every other port as required until the entire sample volume is loaded. Once the sample is completely loaded, seal the loading ports with the second black plastic port cover and tighten it down with the screws. After all of the sample has been loaded into the focusing chamber, Seal the loading ports with the second black plastic port cover. During sample loading, air bubbles can become trapped in the six holes that connect the electrode chamber with the focusing chamber. These bubbles tend to become trapped within this region right here. Air bubbles cause a discontinuity in the electrical field and fluctuations in the voltage. Some power supplies, such as the PowerPack 3000, may shut off in response to air bubbles within the electrical circuit. Therefore, air bubbles must be removed prior to electrophoresis. To do so, lift the assembled and loaded cell and turn it vertically. With the palm of your hand, hit the lower electrode chamber firmly to dislodge any bubbles from the electrode chamber holes into the focusing chamber. Bubbles in the center of the chamber will generally not cause problems with voltage fluctuations. Then turn the cell 180 degrees and hit the other electrode chamber. When all the bubbles have been dislodged, return the cell to the chassis to start the fractionation. Once you have placed the lid on the chassis, attach the high voltage power leads to the power supply. Flip the toggle switches on the chassis to on and run and the cell will begin to rotate. You will set the PowerPack 3000 power supply to 15 watts of constant power and be sure to shut off the no load detection settings of the power supply.